I can't believe we finally get to San Diego to do this interview with George Clooney, and it is raining. Knowing him, he's not going to show. He's so particular with his hair. Hang on a second. That, that's Robin Benacasa. I used to race against her. Come on up. You got time for an interview? Welcome to the Amy Barn in Pittsfield, Vermont. We got a rainy day. You'll probably hear it on the tin roof. Uh, there are five of us here that I'd like to introduce. To my left, we have Sephra. And I'm just going to leave it at that because it's such a great name, Sephra. Da -da -da. To my right, Joe. I have to go with your last name, Desena. Right. And, uh, and Colonel Tim it, Nye huh? over here. Like and uh, I would say, certainly not least, we have Marion Abrams behind the Ooh. camera who uh, puts us all together and makes us all look good and, uh, and really keeps us on track. So thank you very much, Marion. Thank you, Marion. Uh, so this interview is with Robin Benacasa. Joe, you uh, met with her. and um, I've raced with her. Yeah, impressive lady. Yeah. Incredible. So uh, what was it? Uh, four hip replacements. We're going to hear about how you keep going and setting world records with four hip replacements. Yeah, she she eats barbed wire for breakfast. She is the toughest <laughs> woman <laughs> alive. It's good? Yeah. We are here, Spartan Up the Podcast with Robin Benacasa, superhuman. She said four, four hip replacements? Yeah. Four hip replacements. She just paddled 100 miles to get here, San Diego. That's totally not true. She started in <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. So just give me a quick rattle off, like, uh, top 10 biggest athletic accomplishments. Oh, geez. Um Oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. Well, we're two-time adventure racing world champions. Um, a lot of people don't know what even an adventure race is. So 350 miles? Well, they're usually, they're these multi-sport adventure races that are, are 600 to 1,000 miles, totally nonstop, usually with teams of four or five people. And you have to navigate your own way, start to finish. All the teammates have to stay together. If you separate by more than 50 yards, your team's disqualified. If you cross the finish line without each other, your team's disqualified. All non-motorized transportation like hiking, whitewater rafting, mountain biking. Four teammates. And Yep, four, four teammates. And literally completely nonstop in nature. So there's no, like hotels along the way, it's like seven days to ten days, whatever it takes you know, to get there, completely and, nonstop. And you're a two-time world championship. Yep, and we've done about 40 of those crazy races over yeah. the last 15 years. Um, a, a world champion a couple times. Yeah. Uh, 20 times on the podium. Wow. And uh, I got, what, three 24-hour paddling world records. So how, how, far, how, far is, um, how far would you go to paddling for 24 hours? Um, let's see, the flat water kayak record was 121 point something miles. The um, moving water kayak record was 221 uh, point something miles. And I did the stand-up paddling 24-hour record last year, and that was 90.3. So you're, you're pretty lazy. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to do all day. <laughs> How, where did this come from? Like, like uh, 15 years it's been going? Uh, gosh, since, well, literally since I was 8 years old, honestly. Like from gymnastics to track to cross-country, diving. Judo? Triathlon, judo, adventure racing, and now paddling. Just a... But part of the reason, the longevity is, you know, realizing what your strengths are and continuing to go further and further down that track. And that comes from knowing yourself, too. So, so in other words, kayaking felt really good for a while and you pushed it to the limit until you've got... Well, yeah, I just love the kayaking sections and adventure races. Right. I wasn't as good at the mountain biking stuff, but I was great when it came to the kayaking stuff. So after I started having my hips replaced, um, I thought, let's stick with my strengths. You know, let's, let's become a paddler. And so my first race was a... Um, 460 mile paddle from Whitehorse to Dawson City, wow. which is something you would totally do. Wow. <laughs> it's like, why not do the longest, silliest <laughs> thing first? So, um, but I was really so excited because I was like third overall. Wow. And I was like, wow, I found another sport where, as a girl, it's a pretty cool thing to be competitive overall. And that's where I decided, you know, that's, that's where my strength is. I was racing against you once. And um, I, was, I was new to the sport. You had already had a few years on me. And we hit a wall that we were going to uh, Jumar up. Is that, is, that, is that the Jumar? Yes, yeah, what the Jumar is. Right? So there are ropes hanging, and you've got these apparatuses that, that go up, but then lock, and, and you climb oh. up the rope. We hit a wall that we were going to uh, Jumar up. Okay. And um, you, you went pretty quick up. I don't know. It was like 1,000 feet. or some massive wall we climbed. I don't even remember the race we were at. 
And I thought, well, if she made it up there pretty quick, it's probably going to take me half the time. I was stuck out. I was stuck out there for about three hours climbing this thing. I so. had I had my ascension rig rigged, man. I was a great ascender, and Exo is an excellent repeller too because of gravity and all. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's really it's really a neat thing when you find your strength. Yeah. And uh, well, judo. Where'd that come from? Judo. Judo came from. <laughs> uh, okay, so I was doing Ironmans for a bunch of years, and after an Ironman in Hawaii. Um, I ended, I was in the hospital because there were seven of us that got, um, some kind of E. coli infection in the water in the swim. And we were all in the hospital together with like 104, 105 fever. So yada, yada, yada. I was in the hospital thinking, you know what? I want to do a sport where my weight, cause I'm not frail, is, uh, An is actually a strength, like where there's weight divisions or something. And so I started thinking, well, I got to be some kind of fighter or some kind of, and, and the idea for judo just came to me. And, um, and so I started going down that road of becoming a, a judo player and loved it. And, but you went in a really short period of time to like Olympic level? Um, almost. Okay. I, uh, I, I won the nationals. Um, nice. I was third, second, and then first three consecutive years in my, in my weight division. And how long, how, I mean, people put in a lifetime of training for judo. You put in? I, I kind of started at 27. <laughs> And finished up at 30? <laughs> so like 32, I guess. Uh, yeah, you know, I just, I just had a wild hair. And, and when you find, like, early on that something is working for you, that you're kind of good at it, just you go, just, go just got to go. Yeah. yeah. Business ever uh, intrigue you? Being in um, business? Yeah, actually. Uh, I have two businesses now. One's a profit and one's a nonprofit. Yeah. And, um, again, they both came from, well, the speaking thing came totally by accident. And that was because none of the other guys on the racing team would do it. <laughs> so, we do the speeches. Right. right. Somebody asked us one day, like, you guys have to present because this totally matches, uh, you know, in the corporate world, the teamwork that we need, this extreme level of teamwork that we need to really succeed. And so this woman came to our, our team when we were world champions and said, oh, I would love for one of you guys to speak to my client. And uh, it was one of these. You know, right. so I sure. drew the shortest straw. <laughs> sure, and you did it. And so then I started going down that road, and um, and that's been about 10, 10, 12 years now that I've been doing the speaking thing. And then after my hip replacement, I started Project Athena, which is the nonprofit. Project Athena, <laughs> and so that's a nonprofit. Explain that. So um, after I started having my my well, my hip, first hip replacement, um, I thought I. I thought about Louise Cooper, who you know. I remember Louise, yeah. And Louise is now a two-time breast cancer survivor. And so she um, really inspired me because after her first bout with breast cancer, it was so funny because I'd go to her house and she'd be, you know, all big from all the drugs she was on and bald. And she'd be like, she, you'd barely get in the door. And she's like, let's go for a walk. You know, let's go for a run. And whatever she could do. If she couldn't run, she walked. If she couldn't walk, she did something else. And, and she always put an adventure on her calendar so that when she was going through her chemo, she wasn't just a cancer patient. She was a mountaineer in training or she was sure. you know, training for her next adventure race or ultra run. And um, kind of inspired by that, I, that's when I decided to put that first big paddling race on my calendar. Was I was in the hospital and decided to put that big paddling race on my calendar. And then the thought was, why don't we do this for other women? And that's you know? Project Athena. Yeah. We're going to take a break. And we're gonna come. We're gonna go do some judo practice, and we'll be right back. <laughs> I hope you're not sitting still while you listen. If you are, you better get a burpee break in. So is this a judo choke? <laughs> <laughs> what is that exactly? This is love. This is Spartan love. <laughs> so, um, Project Athena. We're, we were finishing up there. Um, you're taking people and you're bringing them to like the Grand Canyon, women specifically. Yeah, well, there's a couple things going on. We take survivors and fundraisers on each of our trips. And we have five or six trips a year. And in the beginning, we thought maybe our survivors would have their own adventurous dream. And some of them do. Like, I want to go to a surf camp in Costa Rica. I want to climb Kilimanjaro. They have a very specific thing. But they don't thing. have a support group to do it. Right. And yeah. we help them do it. And right. then we started creating our own adventures because some survivors were kind of saying, well, I don't ha really have my own dream, but I want to just come with you guys. Got it. So now we have these ongoing adventures. One of them is a Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim, where we oh. hike all the way across the Grand Canyon, all the way back in two days. Nice. Um, and then um, 
we just got back last week from our annual Keys to Recovery adventure where we kayak and ride from Key Largo to Key West, 120 miles. Oh, that's great. And next year we're having a Harbor to Harbor in beautiful, sunny San Diego where we're hiking. Yeah, how often does it rain here? Is <laughs> like, this, is... never. <laughs> you brought this I with brought you, the my rain. friend. <laughs> that's a 50-mile hike from uh, Oceanside Harbor to San Diego Harbor over two days. So how many women will go out on these adventures? Um, we'll take 30 to 40 on each of our adventures. And it's usually six or seven um, survivors and 20 to 25 fundraisers on all of them. Wow. And they're really inspirational because there are things that, well, the people that are listening to this are probably badass, crazy athletes and it's fabulous. But normal people, you know, it's a Would big deal to hike across the Grand Canyon and back exactly. in two days. And so we do these endurance adventures so people can just see how amazing they are. That's awesome. Which is the whole point of it. Yeah. And it's growing. Oh yeah, yeah. Except last year we were um, we were one of the 2014 CNN heroes. Oh wow! So yeah, it was really and changing really changing cool. lives. It feels great, right? Um, I'm always wondering. You've got endurance junkies, right? Like the people you've run into or you do. I would assume that those people have what it takes to build businesses and get stuff done. But typically, I, I find it's not correlated. Somebody that just climbs Everest is not necessarily going to build a business and at the core of this Spartan Up podcast I've been trying to figure out why is that like what you know you, you get the guy who's got a triple-a type personality becomes a CEO of Time Warner retires drops dead because he's so unhealthy yeah. and then you got this really healthy guy or girl that's climbing Everest and they can never run a business so I don't know what's going on there it's a it's a good question because um, you're doing both yeah I mean some of it some of it honestly happened by accident but but I also think that that you know, there's nature and there's nurture. there's nurture. So yeah. sometimes you're surrounded by people that kind of take your hand and say, I think you would be amazing at this. Um, but I think all of us, us, <laughs> you know, just have this thing that, that drives you. And I think for a lot of people, it drives you in, in both directions. Like I want to succeed physically and spiritually. I want to succeed in my business. I want to give to others. Like there's all these different branches of... Success. of maximizing your potential. I yeah. mean, and it's not even money. It's, Being it's what am I capable of? Yeah. That's what you really want to find out. And there, and if you're a smart person, there's so many different avenues that you can find out what you're capable of. And I think over a lifetime, you know, you go from that uber physical self and maximizing that, and then you kind of roll into your uber business self, your uber giving self. As you get older and older, things like the things you want to tackle just... It's like a new, new chapter in your life. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's definitely happening for me. So yeah. I, I, I agree with that. And um, what haven't I asked you? What would you, if you were me, what would you ask you? <laughs> um, well, how about, how about we interview Joe? Yeah, let's do it. All right, yeah. Advice. <laughs> or advice, so, yes. Well, then we'll go back to advice. So, is, so are we talking out of school to, to see what's the next thing with, with Spartan, or is that an uber big secret? Well, you know, um, mm -hmm. I never really focused on building a brand before. I've built businesses before, but didn't understand the word brand. And um, mm. with a brand, like I was just on an airline. I don't want to mention the airline. But um, the brand was all screwed up. Like they had one logo over here, a different logo over there, one message. It was confusing. It wasn't an airline you'd choose again to fly. And um, I'm a little afraid with Spartan that we could end up being all over the place. And so I want to be really focused on, look, we change lives. Um, we want to be a sport. We want to be in the Olympics. It's not about drinking beer. It's not about the mud. It's about just ripping yourself off the couch and getting it done. It's got to be accessible. It can't be 600 miles because there's just a tiny little bunch of people in the world that would do that. And, um, right, and that's not, that does not make a, a profitable or, or strong or, or worth, viable worthwhile business, right? business, right? You know, right. We, we put on right. adventure races way back when, and, and um, there's just not enough people that are willing to do that. Right. So, so um, if you really want to change lives which I do and you do, um, this platform's working to do that. So I don't, I just, now I just don't want to screw it up. Right. So you right? feel very strongly you've got the right. It feels right. I mean, it's growing. Place. Any country we go in, it just works. Um, the name is so unbelievable. Yeah. That the was name, a strong move. It's a, right. Just, so we got lucky with the name. Luck has a lot to do with it. And, and, um, and now I meet a lot of smart business people that say, well, you got to be ready for the next thing. You know, it used to be triathlon, but, but Iron Man went 30 years. We're right. four years into this thing. Right. Right? No, I mean, the potential is, is unbelievable. Yeah. I think if you just kind of keep, keep giving people more adventure, more ways to inspire themselves, more ways to amaze themselves and discover how strong they are, 
they're going to keep coming. I would think so. I mean, there's no reason not to. So I think you're going down a great road there. Yeah. Um, okay, so aside from the physical side of Spartan, um, it's, is there... I will have to kill you if I tell you, but ah. we're, we're, working, we're working on something really cool. Really cool. Um, there are, let's say, 7 billion people on Earth. And so far, let's say we've changed a few million lives and we want to get to like 100 million. There's just going to be a lot of people that will never come do this. Crawl under barbed wire, jump over fire, I don't get it. But you know it's life changing. Right. And the people that have done it know it's life changing. And, and you can be a Spartan in so many different ways. In so many different ways. So, so th yeah, this is just what I'm thinking as, I'm working as you. On, we're working yeah. on something that is, um, uh, without giving it away, you don't have to come to the race to experience what everything we just talked about is. And, and hopefully it leads you to Project Athena or 600 Miles or Spartan Race or an Ironman or, yeah, or something. It doesn't matter what, what it is, as long as you're getting out there and realizing how strong you are. Yeah. I think you're and missing be, a piece of life And just be productive here yeah. on the planet, because being productive is happy. That's, that's what right. I say. People yeah. are like, oh, you work so hard, you work so yeah. hard. I'm like, I would never, ever have it any other way. It's like I wake up and the first thing I want to do is, is look at my businesses. How do I grow? How do I do more? How do I get better at my sport? It's, I mean, there's just all these things all day long. And you're the same person yeah. th that are saying, how can I be better? How can I be more productive? Well, the simplest one is um, and you love a it. plant or a tree, right? In, in a perfect environment, doesn't really get strong, doesn't grow deep roots. Um, in a harsh environment where it's always testing, it gets strong and... I think that's what we're really saying. Like, just get out over your skis, get out of your comfort zone because you grow. Right, and that's probably why we've always done this, you know, always done this crazy Spartan adventure racing business person. But if you go thing. too far, which you've gone, you get, <laughs> you get four hips. <laughs> you run out of cartilage. Yeah, you've gone. Don't do what she's done. Do what I've done. <laughs> yeah, keep all your parts and, right. and become an awesome entrepreneur. What's your uh, favorite exercise? Um, one I'm, exercise for the person just getting off the couch. What would they do? Oh, um, yeah. See, like paddling, you got a boat, you got a board, blah, blah, An blah. An ocean. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I think that for anybody, you can get off a couch and start walking up hills. I mean, honestly, like, like the simplest 101, yeah. just start yeah. walking up hills with a... I noticed yeah. in, in airports, I'm doing a lot of airports lately, yeah. they're taking away the staircases. There's just the, es there's just the escalators and the friggin' elevators. Literally, you're not seeing staircases anymore. Stop it. And it's people crazy. look like you like you have a third eye. Yeah, why would you? I'm, I'm the only guy on the stairs. There's cobwebs. It's never been used before. There's no lights. The spiders <laughs> hanging across. Mommy, what is that thing? They used That's to call a those. Spartan. <laughs> well, good stuff. You're awesome. Cool. Thanks Thank for you, my uh, coming. I'm so glad to see you. Yeah, we'll paddle back now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's a story behind this. Joe and I were at an event down in Mexico uh, a couple months ago. And he noticed I was limping. That's what was going. I said, oh, my hip is shot. My hip is shot. I have to have some surgery. And he immediately said, you got to talk to my friend. So I heard of Robin Benacasa before this interview. Um, just the fact that she'd had multiple hip replacements. But I had no idea that she's, uh, what is it, uh, adventure racing world champion. Uh, multiple. Judo world champion. Yeah. Like just Paddleboarding world champion. And, I mean, and, and, I mean, and all these sports were things. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. All these sports were things. It's like. She was already really good at one thing and just took something else up. And within two years, was at the top of the game and everything she's ever done. What, where's that come from? Yeah, I mean, she just built like a, um, for lack of a better term, brick house, right? I mean, she <laughs> yeah. is just. Yeah, she's a strong lady. She's ripped. She, she's a fire woman. You know, a great quote that she had was, realize your strengths, know yourself, follow that path, right? Yeah. And she just has superhuman strengths in whatever she does. Yeah. Well, and, and to go to the judo, because you asked her about that, and you said most people train for judo their whole life. She started at 26 and was national champion at 29 or something like that. Yeah, that's um, pretty quick. Yeah, so obviously there's something very special there where she has some natural talents, but she, she seems to have some way of, of capitalizing those talents. There's a lot of people who have physical skills, and we've talked about how strong she is, but I think the strength of her spirit really comes through, you know, in her eyes and her smile and whatnot, and somehow she manages to harness that and, and leverage it really quickly. Well, and exactly that. I mean, it's not so much that, yes, she's, she's a great physical talent. Obviously, she's done all these things. But then she, she has transferred that, and she's got this Athena project, and she yep. takes the the cancer survivors out. She was yep. talking about doing the hikes, you know, the Grand Canyon, the Rim, yeah. the Rim, and the rest of these different adventure races that she's done. And just to get people motivated to do that and to, to expose people to that. And then she married up both the, the, the athlete with the fundraisers and the yep. people together. Hmm. And so, I mean, again, she, she is somebody who is great at what she does, but she has, she didn't stay there. She didn't say stagnant. And yep. then she broadened out from there, yeah. you know? And so that's, that's really impressive. Yeah, absolutely. And she said, um, she said, you know, fi when you find something that's working, just go. 
Yeah. Just go. And Joe, that's what you say a lot, right? About being successful in business or Spartan Race is just, just keep going. Just keep yeah. moving. <laughs> just keep just going. Keep moving. Yeah. People do tend to get stagnant. One, yeah. one last thing that Robin said that really resonated with me, and I've talked about this with, with friends. She said, you always have to have an adventure on your calendar. Because if you don't have something ahead on your calendar, there's nothing to get you going. And I love that idea that when you finish one adventure, plunk that next one. And I always figure six months. I like the idea that within six months before or behind, there's always something really cool. And uh, it just keeps you going. You are on a constant adventure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Need, you need to plunk down when do you go home. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a great point, actually. <laughs> We'll talk about that. <laughs> Our wandering. Cool. Well, wandering when I am doctor. at home, I'm going to jump on my computer. I'm going to go to SpartanUpPodcast.com <laughs> and uh, watch a bunch more of these interviews. I, I actually want to say that I've really, really enjoyed this whole batch where where we get to see these. And um, I'm taking so much out of these. Like in my own life, I'm watching these interviews and these podcasts. And there's always something. Sometimes at the start, sometimes at the end. But every single one of them, I go, that's what I need to get from that one. You're going to like this. I, I got an email the other day from a surgeon. And he said... He listens to Spartan Up podcast while he's operating. Nice, <laughs> perfect. Good luck to the patient. Oh, absolutely. No, absolutely. <laughs> oh, we have another doctor. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another epic story of success. Get more at SpartanUpPodcast.com backslash zero five two, or follow us on Twitter at Spartan Up Pod. The Spartan Up Podcast is brought to you by Spartan Race. Make sure you're fueled up for your next Spartan race by joining our food of the day at Spartan.com.